put on about 15, 10, 15 pounds of muscle these last couple months. I just want to talk about a couple things that I did to achieve that naturally and still stay pretty lean. Not as lean as I was, but, you know, it's still, it's still pretty good. So I was about 160, the low 160s when I started this bulk. And right now I'm about 170, depending on when, when, I, when I weigh myself. The heaviest is like 179, and then I can probably get down to 176. So right in that range. And pretty much how I was able to do this is, one, is I track everything I eat. This makes it like a science, so you don't have to guess. You don't have to hope that you're getting enough protein in, or you don't have to you know, feel insecure that maybe I'm going to make gains, maybe I'm not. You know, when you track your food, you get to a point where you just know. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to get bigger. Hopefully it's going to be, you know, more muscle than fat. Oh, it's a little too much fat. Tone it down. You know, you can, you get, you get to control those little variables that make such a big difference. I've done that. Another thing I've done is I lift heavy compound movements and I give myself tons of time to rest too. I don't really mess around with too many isolation exercises. I mostly only do big compound lifts, weighted dips, weighted pull-ups, handstand push-ups, um, and that muscle-ups. That's pretty much it. I don't really go near the bench press and, and squat and deadlift. I started incorporating that recently as well, but... You know, you're not going to see me doing too many isolation exercises. It's just, for me, it's not as fulfilling and it's not as fun to train like that. And I've seen much better results in uh, just my intensity and everything about lifting is better for me when I'm just doing heavy ass, you know, dips or pull-ups or uh, things of that sort. So I don't really, like I said, I don't really stick to isolation as of now. And I'm not a bodybuilder. I, that's not really what I'm going for. I want to be more of a calisthenics athlete guy. Heavy dips, heavy pull-ups, I think that's badass. And the physique you get from doing those is sick. So that's what I'm into. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And I played with my rest times. So some days I'm taking two, three, four days of rest. And some other days I've taken five, six, seven days of rest. So I'm going super, super hard in the gym. couple sets of really intense work. And then I'll take four, five, six days to recover until the next workout. So, you know, it's a little bit unconventional, but for natural athletes, we have to do this. We have to take, if we're, if we're leveling up our intensity to the point where it's, you know, getting crazy, you have to take extended rest periods like that. Otherwise, you're going to get injured or you're just not going to be able to recover. Because if you go super intense in the gym, like I'm talking you know, insane, your, your tendons are going to be sore, your muscles, of course, your bones, you know, you, you need time to recover. So my rest periods have been quite long compared to a more traditional, you know, bodybuilder, but it's been working. It's like the Mike Menser method. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So if you guys don't know, I have a free school community. I drop in there every day. And uh, do a coffee hour in the morning where I just talk with anyone who has questions or Q&A or anything like that about nutrition, working out. It's uh, totally free. Uh, the link's in my on my channel page. Just hop on in there. And, um, yeah, there's going to be free re resources coming out on nutrition, on weightlifting, on everything fitness-wise. So if you're not in there already, jump on in. It's free. Nothing to lose. And uh, hopefully I'll be providing value for you guys every single day. So see you in there. Thanks for tuning in.